Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, after the last presenter, I was uh, reluctant to bring this up with all the doom and gloom we heard from my AI killing us. Um, the purpose of this presentation today is to show you what we have been doing with uh, robotics, uh, primarily with uh, near human robotic hands. I will quickly go through an uh, overview of the company, why we started it, and what we're doing with the technology that we developed over the last three years. So the company was founded back in 2021 by my wife as my co-founder and our son, Aftar. What we started doing was building a, a lightweight, affordable prosthetic device. The uh, hand was uh, very rugged. It was meant to be uh, affordable. And at the same time, it was meant to be very compact, something that was not available at the market. We overdid it. The hand, uh, hand worked exactly the way we wanted it. Uh, and then, uh, in addition to prosthetic devices, we started getting a lot of interest from industry. Can we use this hand to automate tasks in industry beyond what conventional gripping uh, grippers are able to do? That's two finger grippers, three finger grippers, and various suction type devices. So we uh, obviously uh, took the hint from industry and uh, decided to reconfigure the hand to be more rugged, more robust, and stronger. And the most important part make it affordable. As was mentioned earlier, uh, one of the uh, key factors is, is it easy to use? Yes, it is. All the videos you saw a few minutes ago, they were all set up with a matter of hours, and it shows you how easy the hand is to use and integrate into existing robotic systems, as well as a custom-made system for this product itself. And the main, uh, main thing we plan to do with this hand is automate jobs or automate tasks that just cannot be done with conventional end of arm tools. So this is the problem we're trying to solve. One of the reports uh, we used as a reference indicates that by 2030, 2030, there will be 85 million jobs going unfilled. Most of these jobs could be addressed, or most of these shortages can be addressed through AI, software. Uh, this is for uh, service industry and white collar jobs. Uh, I think somebody touched upon that earlier as well. However, there's 9.4 million jobs that cannot be automated. These are the jobs that require the capability or the functionality of the human hand. And uh, the four pictures shown on the screen, they're all from the four industries where we have paying customers right now. That's manufacturing, agriculture, biopharma, and teleoperations. You saw some of the video cl uh, clips uh, from the proof of concept uh, when we opened this uh, presentation. So this is true not just across these industries, but other industries as well, but I will focus on these as my use cases as we go forward. And this is our solution. By replicating the capability of the human hand, we could now start offering a more advanced automation solution to industrial customers. As I mentioned, manufacturing. The picture shown is for a machine tending robot. This particular use case, the, the customer has over 100 different products they machine. And they do it in small batches between 1,000 and 5,000 units. The issue is these components or the parts they're manufacturing are different sizes, different shapes. So to, to use conventional two and three finger end of uh, arm tools, they have to have a different specially designed end of arm tool for each product. If with 100 plus SKUs there, they have now the cost goes up for specialized automation. So the challenge they posed to us was, can the hand operate across 100 different objects? And the answer was yes. So the same hand, once it's set up, it could be used with a variety of sizes, a variety of shapes, without any problem. Only thing the customer has to do is change that, uh, the tools within the CNC machine itself. Similarly in agriculture, again, why would you use a hand uh, something as sophisticated as the robotic hand I showed you for agriculture, just moving packages around, moving bell peppers and cucumbers. There's several reasons for this. Uh, a quick background for one customer we have out of British Columbia, or it's the west coast of Canada. Right now, they have a labor shortage in the greenhouses. For the one greenhouse, they had to fly in people from South America, 
least three times a year to pick their produce. Uh, you can do the math very quickly, the flight cost, the labor cost, and the uh, impact on the environment of bringing people in. But they have no choice. There are no local labor left to pick the peppers or the tomatoes or the cucumbers. And this is where the hand comes in. It, it, it's, it's versatile. It could grasp a variety of shapes, variety of textures, even ripe tomatoes or ripe peppers without damaging them. And that's the key feature that we're going to bring in to this market. It's not just the dexterity, but it's also is applied, measured application of force, I should say, to uh, make sure that we are not damaging either the plant or the produce in this particular use case. And the last piece I'll talk about very quickly before I move on is the biopharma. Uh, it seems like a pretty straightforward task. Pick up a pipette uh, and put fluid into a test tube. Well, the challenge was not just that one particular task, it was the entire workstation. So the customer wants test tubes taken out of a box, placed into a test tube rack, use the pipette, put fluids in, and once the rack is full, pick it up, put it on the shelf. There's a lot going on here, a lot of different shapes, a lot of different uh, sized objects being manipulated, and we were able to do that demo in 30 minutes. So going back to ease of use, ease of programming, and uh, leverage the versatility that is inherent in the five-finger design of the end of arm tool for the human hand. So what? Up till now, all the videos we did or, or all the uh, demos we did for early customers, they were pre-programmed. We were able to program it uh, relatively quickly. Uh, to give you an idea how far things have come over the last two years, in 2021, it used to take us weeks to program this hand, just so many moving parts. It's a 20 degrees of freedom hand with uh, 16 actuated, four under actuated joints. But now, two years later, we could program the hand within an hour. A lot, a lot has changed in software and sensor systems and is how do, we, how do we program it. We show the hand what needs to be done. It captures that movement, it can replicate it. Now going forward, we see a huge role that AI is going to play in uh, automation. And this is where uh, we see uh, integration of uh, sensors, machine vision, machine learning, and a variety of AI packages available. That's going to converge, giving us something wonderful. And that is a, a human or robot that could watch another human do a job, do a task, and then mimic it. This is where the high dexterity comes in. As you watch the intricate movements of a human hand doing a job or doing a task, if the dexterity is there in the robotic hand, it's easier for the robot to mimic that, which is not as easy to do with a two-finger gripper or a different type of a single function uh, gripping tool. I could share this slide with you after if you want it. Just let me know. All these little uh, thumbnails are linked to videos. The only one I want to bring your attention to is right in the middle called pepper sorting. This one took us 20 minutes to set up, and the idea was just give it a criteria. I want to separate the red peppers from the green peppers. That was it. Then the machine vision took over, took a picture of the table, identified the target, and the hand went forward and grasped it. So the grasp was autonomous in this particular case, whereas the hand stops moving once the proper grasp is generated around the pepper. This is a very simple demonstration on a relatively simple shape, but the same concept we plan on using going forward, an autonomous grasp generation and synthesis. This is coming fast, and uh, we already demonstrated this in the lab. By early 2025, we'll be the, uh, demonstrating this autonomous grasping with more complex uh, yeah, that need to be handled. Some of the work we plan on doing with it, as you see, uh, picture uh, just to the right of the uh, pepper sorting uh, uh, thumb, uh, thumbnail, is using a pair of pliers to pick up another object. Now, now we got compounded movement kind of built into the hand. So this is uh, what's uh, possible with machine vision and general uh, AI as we go forward. So the, uh, the effort and the work required to program the device is reduced. Meanwhile, the capability that the hand is, uh, could deliver is increased and, easily, and readily available
to us as being the users and the programmers so they could put this hand to work in jobs that are going unfilled, especially in dangerous industries such as chemical production, uh, anything with biohazard, military applications for uh, mine clearing or handling hazardous materials. And this ties into Industry 5.0. And uh, the big, uh, big thing here is where we, in normal industrial applications, we could isolate the robot to do the work on its own. We don't have to worry about safety, but a cage around it, do whatever you want. But in Industry 5.0, these robots have to work alongside humans. And this is where we think that uh, we have a great advantage one is the look and feel of the hand is like a human hand, so the icky factor is not there, having to deal with something that is kind of odd looking. So, so, so the humans that are working with these robots will be a bit more comfortable when this robot is being deployed. Secondly, the built-in sensors, not only proximity sensors, but the sensors of the, for the force application, uh, they're critical for safe operation near human beings. This picture shows uh, our hand holding uh, one of those very thin plastic cups. If you apply too much force, the lid pops off, you got a big mess. If not enough force, you don't have a successful grip. Uh, all to say that there is sufficient sensors and feedback in this hand to apply just the right amount of force to move objects around regardless of how, how fragile they might be. And this is important when you're working near people. You don't want a pinching injury, so you don't want fast moving arms that can cause damage. So couple that with AI that, uh, and other sensors, now we have the ability to not only have robots work and augment human labor, but they could collaborate with humans. And this is the other, uh, I guess, feature of AI that we're all looking forward to, you could talk to it. So the AI needs to be transparent, and it also needs to be explainable. And by explainable meaning, a layperson could interact with it and understand how the robot or, or the system came up with a certain decision. Uh, we're working with another company out of Germany on this project. And uh, what the, the big benefit of it is, everybody doesn't have to be an expert in robotics anymore. We could take a worker off the factory, bring out the robot with all these capabilities built into it. Now to train it, the human operator could talk to this robot just as he would be talking to a colleague and saying, I want you to move item A to item B, screw the top on, take the water out, and give me some water or get me an apple or whatever. You just talk like normal language, talk to the robot, and that would allow the robot to uh, replicate what they're doing. And the last piece is we're working with another company out of Washington State, is how do we train these robotic systems? Same thing we show them, like just like we show a child or a, or, or a colleague how to do something for the first, first time. Uh, the demo they used was flipping a burger. Picks up a spatula, picks up a burger, flips it over, and to tell the robot to repeat it, it could repeat all the motions the human can, and this is why we are focusing on building the hand to be as near human as possible, so there's no lag or no, no um, I guess a difference between what the robot sees and what it is capable of doing. Our vision for the future is not replacing workers or replacing um, labor. What it is, is, is converging or, or taking advantage of all the technology that are converging now. We got sensors, we got software, we got various hardware, and you've seen videos from everything from Tesla to uh, Boston Dynamics. A lot of great stuff is happening, but they're all individually siloed. What we see is over this horizon, as the, all these technologies converge, we could have something like this. This is our own in-house uh, prototype we built for a project we did um, for, uh, from federal Canadian, uh, Canadian federal funding. And uh, this, this is a bi-manual bi uh, manipulation system used for hazardous material handling, but we see it getting into industry as well, where it could now, it could handle object, uh, assemble complex parts in industry or uh, down the road, help with assisted care to people that might be mobility challenged or having health issues. That's down the road, but when you bring it all together 
with the AI, with the census suites, and with all the different policy being put into place, we believe we have something here that could create synthetic or artificial labor that we could use as we see fit to fill the gaps that we see coming our way to various demographic shifts and changes happening around the world. So this is it, the future starts now. Um, I'm happy to share this deck with you. Uh, if there's the videos in there or you can visit our website, you can learn more about it. We're always looking for collaboration, especially from the AI team. Is, uh, we're, we're focused on hardware, but main thing is that there is a lot going on in the robotics and automation industry. And I think if we work together, we could get a lot, of, lot more good out of it than uh, I would say necessarily bad. Thank you very much.